All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope this is now working. We had a small, uh, small technical difficulties on the final stages of preparation, so we had just had to change computers. So I hope everybody can hear me now, and uh, we can get started. So I'm apologizing that we are slightly late, but uh, let's try to make it up during the during the course of the uh, webinar. So. Let's begin. So uh, my name is Ville Kutsunen. I'm uh, uh, working for Granlund in the designer business, I'm responsible for uh, for this business unit. And um, it's uh, actually quite nice to see uh, such an international audience today. So we actually, uh, I think we are beating all the records for attendees in, in Granlund webinars. So that's very, very nice to see that this is an interesting topic and uh, uh, there are so many interested people online. Uh, our Subject today is uh, Granlund Designer, uh, but first we will just quickly discuss uh, Granlund as a company. I will give you a few pointers about that one because I think there's a few people online who haven't been involved with us before. Uh, then uh, we will focus on the, our software of offering and then of course mainly on the Granlund Designer software, which is the new solution we are now releasing. And uh, at the very end we will have time for questions and answers. So. If during the presentation you come up with any any uh, uh, any questions that you might like to get answered, please type them in the in the participant panel. There's a space for questions, and we will then take a look at the end. If there's uh, many questions, it might be that we cannot answer all of them during the presentation, but then we will get back to you later on uh, by email and then answer those there. So no worries there. All right. Then we can get started. So first about Granlund. So uh, we are uh, maybe the biggest uh, MAP, so mechanical ele electrical plumbing uh, company in uh, Finland. Uh, uh, we are quite an old company. Uh, just had our 55-year anniversary uh, during the summer. And uh, Finland is a challenging place to live. It's it's dark, miserable, uh, usually wet uh, when it's not snowing. So that's probably something that has uh, inspired uh, us to build well and come up with systems which help us to build better. And uh, that, that's the reason for many innovations in uh, from Finland and what you can now see in different kind of uh, computer applications as well. We have over 600 people working in the company at the moment and uh, more and more focus on consultancy and then also in software development. Uh, we are mostly operating in Finland. We have something like 15 offices, so good coverage there. But also we have a lot of customers and users abroad. And now there's uh, certain focus areas abroad uh, like Middle East, China and Northern Europe, which we are now looking into. So uh, let's say that it's a very healthy and uh, growing company as well. We have uh, uh, two software brands at the moment. The other one is Grounded Manager for uh, energy efficiency and service process management. And you can find more information about that from groundedmanager.com. And then we have Grounded Designer, which is for design information management. And we also have a web page uh, for that one, and it's grounddesigner.com. So you can find more information from there. All right, that was a really quick introduction to the company. Now we can focus on Designer. So Designer is a new cloud-based solution for managing the MAP information and making the system uh, definitions. Uh, our goal is there to increase the margins for the planning work, and that comes from avoiding errors, uh, avoiding omissions, so that everybody works the same way. Uh, the biggest benefit, I would say, for a, a design company is that you can really manage how the people in the company are working. So you get rid of a lot of Excel sheets, you get rid of people doing their own uh, type of reporting, and instead, you can easily uh, have a one workflow, standardized reporting, and uh, a, lot, a lot smoother handover of information to your customers. Also, it enables some new services that we can discuss later on as well. Uh, the background why Grandle Designer has been implemented. So it's a system that has been used in-house uh, in Grandle for more than 10 years in different kind of versions. And now this is the newest version, which is the cloud version, is the one that we are 
officially releasing. Uh, there was a need to organize the way we do design. So uh, in a big company which is growing, you, uh, you need to have a way of making sure that everybody does the same good quality work. And um, in, uh, for this region, we had a focus that, okay, we want to capture all the information, all the data from these designs, and then make sure that uh, we can make the next version, the next project for the same customer as smoothly as possible, so that we have all the older information available. Uh, there was a lot of problems in when people had Excel files or different kind of filing systems. So when people were leaving or new people joined in, it was very really difficult to hand over the information. So now uh, when we have multiple people working in the same project, they can just easily access the same system and always get to the same, same data. The other, other reason is that uh, information only has value if you can easily find it. So in a case that you start searching for information, it usually gets old before you find it if you cannot get the information immediately or let's say in a very fast manner or it's not well organized. So uh, we see that using Randall Designer actually adds to the value of the information by making it easy to find and uh, having it at hand when you need it. All right, so our main benefits, just to recap, uh, we increase the margins, we improve quality, we make it possible to offer new services, for example, in facility management through the uh, uh, BIM data, but then also uh, the big, big benefit of being able to standardize how uh, uh, the planning work is done in, the, in your organization. Okay, then a good good sort of a picture uh, about where do we fit in the process. So uh, we don't do 3D modeling. That might be a disappointment for many, but uh, we are sort of in the process before that's done. So uh, in the really early phase of a construction project from a MAP standpoint, you have a lot of requirements. You have the spaces, you, you do uh, calculations and simulations about energy usage, you select which kind of systems you are using um, and these things. So uh, when you have done those, uh, you can start to uh, visualize those designs, for example, with the diagrams as, as shown here in the in the bottom uh, left-hand side of the picture. So you can define what kind of uh, air conditioning system, for example, you have. You can then define in a detailed way that system, what kind of pumps, what kind of cooling coils, air handling units you have. And that work is done inside Designer. Uh, you, the designer can select what kind of values to use and then uh, update those, uh, that information inside Designer instead of going into, uh, let's say, a modeling environment. And we can easily link this information so that you can either change the values, for example, for your pump, either in the diagram or in the uh, database directly, in, in, in the cloud database. And the information is all the time linked. So you don't have the situation that you have one information in one place, another information in another place, and then you need to remember to update both. So now you just update it in one place and everything is synced automatically. The other thing we do is approvals. So uh, with Granular Designer, once the designer has uh, made the system ready, so that you have, select, for example, defined all your pumps, you can easily hand over the information uh, to the contractor, who actually then finds the uh, actual products, the actual pumps, so from the manufacturer or wherever they're buying them, uh, and then offers those back to the designer that are these okay. So now we, we have in the system information about what was designed, but then we also have the information what the contractor actually installs uh, into the building. So then we have the as-built information we can then use in facility management as well. So sort of a recap, we use the early phase requirements to define the equipment, and then when that equipment has been done, we can start to do modeling. And modeling, of course, can be done in various different uh, 3D uh, design softwares or in 2D, uh, or there are various different solutions, as we all know. Um, but you can then do that once you know what you're actually modeling. So our sort of advice and our uh, process goes in a way that you don't directly jump into the modeling environment and start uh, drawing your ducts and pipes into the building, but rather first really plan out 
what kind of system we are having and then uh, implement that later on in the model and then later of course in the real life in the site. All right, let's see this in practice in a few moments. Uh, one thing we would like to highlight as well is that in the product we have 20 years of this what we call an engineering intelligence. So in the libraries, in the templates that we offer with the software, there uh, there's sort of the information that we have been gathering when we have been using it for the last uh, uh, 10 years in this software and then all the, the long history of Grand as a company, it's sort of built in there. So it's done by engineers who do this every day to engineers that we also want to get sort of working in a more efficient manner. So it, it's very realistic, let's say. All right, the first benefit I would like to highlight here is that in the old days, we had a lot of uh, people in, in an engineering company who all did their own work. So they had different kind of filing systems, different kind of reports and templates. And when you ask, okay, where is this information? They, they had to go and start hunting for it. And we all know how this works. You first do one, one Excel sheet, then uh, a few weeks later you need to do a revision. So you have two and time goes on. Suddenly you have a, quite a big number of different kind of files you need to dig up information from. And that of course leads into uh, all kinds of problems in finding information. Whereas in designer, how we see this is that we can have a lot of people working uh, in an environment where everything is automatically kept in good order and everybody's working in the same workflow. All right, I think it's a good time now to take a look uh, at the software as well. So let's go into Grand Designer. And I'll just put that in full screen so you can see it a bit better. So this is where we get started from. Uh, this is the Granult portal, and this is the place where all your projects and uh, your uh, facilities live in. The structure is quite simple. So for example, here we have a uh, facility called, well, Engineering Demo 1 and, Engi and Engineering Demo 2. Um, and these are basically thought to be two different buildings. The other one seems to be a London hospital, and the other one is HQ office. And there's two projects in both of these. So you can think that, um, for example, in a hospital, you keep renovating those usually multiple times a year. So we can either look at the hospital uh, from, from the moment it was constructed to the moment it was demolished through these projects. So every time there is a, uh, some kind of a change done to the hospital, we can start a new project and then see what kind of changes we have there. So let's just go into this London hospital and I'll start the application from here. And uh, it's now offering me this HVAC a demo application. So we have for mechanical side, we have your own application. For electrical, we have it own for automation and so forth. So they are all dedicated to that trade uh, and uh, those kind of functions uh, there are. And here we can see Grand Designer. There seems to be a small network lag at the moment, but no worries about that one. So this is our main view. So uh, as said before, uh, we are. Uh, this is a cloud-based. You don't have to do any installation whatsoever. So once you start setting up uh, Designer, you basically get a uh, password and a username, and then with those you can then access the system. Uh, this is our menu, I'll just open up a little. So in the tree view here, we can see the different buildings we have in this hospital, we have two buildings. And then when I start opening it up more, we can see that, okay, now we are looking at the mechanical side. So heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and we can drill down, for example, into the ventilation area. So here we see our uh, uh, sort of uh, service areas and uh, uh, the, the breakdown of the project. So it's easy to understand what kind of systems we have for each, uh, each uh, area. I can still open this further, of course. So then we actually get to the technical part. So here, for example, on the office space, so in the block A, we seem to have two air handling units, the other one for supply and the other one for exhaust, which, which we uh, then uh, can start to edit. So we can either start defining attributes and uh, specifications on this level, or we can even 
open this up further. It depends on what kind of uh, process you're uh, driving and on what which accuracy level you need the information to be. But here you can see then see how that air handling unit is uh, built up. So um, the the process works. I'll sort of recap what we saw in the process diagram. Uh, in the early phase. We are building up this tree. We are building up, building up, for example, this air handling unit system by defining what kind of components we have there, and then uh, what kind of attributes is each of those components have. So, uh, and this goes to as deep as you ever needed to go. So, uh, in an air handling unit, if you have a heating coil, then you can define what kind of a pump or a control valve you have, and then these all have the, the uh, attributes you need. And of course, this is not calculating anything. So basically, it's uh, your intelligence as a designer to decide what kind of values you need to have here. What is the maximum uh, temperature, for example, like here, or what is the pressure loss in a system? So everything is defined uh, in this environment. And uh, because this is cloud-based, you can easily share this information. So we actually have a now case in Finland where uh, there's a, a two companies which are working in one project. So both of the companies have multiple designers working uh, in one project. And instead of sharing a lot of files, a lot of emails, they can all log into the same project uh, through their web browser and then access the information here. And they just agree who's working on which areas and which uh, uh, trades of the building. And then there's basically no no problems in that and it has removed a lot of uh, communication uh, problems that they have had before uh, when people have been working separately and in different systems and slightly different formats all right we'll we'll get back to designer in a moment i'll just show a few more slides the other benefit we're looking here is the way to do faster design so you can, uh, when starting a new project, you can easily uh, copy uh, some of that information we saw in the tree diagram or in the tree view uh, from either existing projects where you know that you have a very similar uh, solutions, for example, similar kind of air handling units, or you can copy those from your company uh, database and from the libraries there. And this is quite powerful because once you have a good company database and a good a good library. You can decide what kind of uh, solutions we have we are preferring. So nobody has to come up with their own every time, but instead they copy the uh, approved ones, the good ones from there. And of course, if you do an innovation, you come up with something uh, something good here. We can always update it back to the company library as well. And we can we can take a quick look how that's that's done as well. So the, the first way we can sort of populate this tree view is that we could just add, add um, let's say, a, a cooling coil for this uh, machine, this is the first air handling unit. I'll just do that by right-clicking it and clicking Add, and the system will then uh, automatically offer me those components that we can use, and we can see a cooling coil here. Just click on that one and click Next, and we can give it a number. 08 seems to make sense and I, I'll click finish and now we can see that a cooling coil was added uh, into the system and here you can see all the attributes that come with it so uh, of course it's blank because we don't know the system won't know what type of a cooling coil it is so now we can start to populate the information and start in putting in the, the necessary uh, bits of information into this one uh, you can also you don't have to be limited to just, for example, giving temperatures like 60 degrees here, but you can also write. So, for example, you could add an uh, uh, additional note here that this is how it used to be. So I'll just write an old value here and click save. And now everybody knows that, okay, it used to be 16. We have to figure out what it's what it is in the future. So this is also a way of communicating the design to other people. The other and maybe a faster way to populate uh, design is to uh, do it by importing it from the libraries. And I'll, I'll show that next. So I'll click, click import and then select that. Let's 
let's import from the model library. And here we can see now on the uh, right hand side the company template. So I can first select from here what, the, what type of a system I want to import. And we could, for example, select the air handling unit uh, type 2. And then we can decide where we want to import that to. And it seems that our atrium area doesn't have an air handling unit at all at the moment. So I can select that one and click the arrow and it will now automatically populate the system there. Just quickly click finish. And uh, in a few moments, it, it's now populating all those, all that equipment uh, in the database. So we can now navigate in the tree to the atrium and open it here. And we can see that, okay, the air handling unit was added and I can keep opening that up. So all of, all of these pieces of equipment were added from the template. Now, of course, we can edit this freely. So, for example, if you know that, okay, we, we are won't, won't be needing this sound, sound suppressor, I can just right-click on it and, for example, remove it from, from this equipment. So now we can easily customize, custom, customize the, uh, the template to fit our, uh, uh, our needs. And, of course, the system is not limited to this, so if you want to uh, come up with something that you don't have, you haven't used before, or you don't have in your company database, then you can just create it here by typing and selecting what type of properties you then need to define. So the system is very uh, flexible regarding this use. The next one is finding information, and uh, this is. I think we're using a modern database really shines uh, compared to using uh, any kind of an uh, let's say file-based system or Excel or something like this. So first, uh, it's uniform because everybody does the, does the work in the same way. Uh, you keep using the same kind of easy uh, tools to create the information. So then, usually the output is very similar as well. And also, uh, the system is looking who who did what. Which, which is uh, quite important as well. So uh, let's let's take a look at designer again. So the the first thing is that it's tracking uh, all the changes we do here. So uh, for example, let, we could go back to the first air handling unit we've been looking at, and uh, uh, let's look uh, for example the cooling coil, and uh, I can change some of the values here. So, for example, we can uh, change the capacity here to be 55 kilowatts, like so. And now, uh, if I go and check the history of this component, we will immediately see uh, what kind of histories we have there. So, uh, this seems to be have a, quite a many uh, different kind of changes. So, this is what we were changing a moment ago. So, we can see all the old values. Uh, so here's the new one, the 55 kilowatts, the old one, 47. We can see who has been doing these changes, uh, when they have been done, uh, in which role, and then if we need to, we can also restore an old situation. So again, uh, we're tracking what people are doing in the system. So it's uh, not not uh, it's quite difficult to actually make a mistake, and uh, so that others wouldn't see what what's been happening. And you can always go back. The uh, the other thing is that, for example, it's a database, so you basically never delete anything. So, for example, here we can see what kind of uh, systems we have been removing, like the cooling calls, for example, here. And if we want to bring this back, then we can just click Restore, for example, here. And it will then uh, bring back that uh, equipment. So this makes it quite powerful. We uh, we never we never have a situation that you would actually lose anything. You, all, you can always have a way of bringing it back because it's a real database. The other thing uh, designer does well is that it revisions information, and we can take a look at the reporting to make this clear. This is uh, the standard reports we have defined, and of course, for each company, you can define your own, and um, these are quite easy to do. But uh, let's stick today with these uh, predefined ones. 
we have report, for example, for a schedule of pumps. And there's two types of reports here. The other one is a work printout, uh, which you can take at any time. And then you have publishing, which actually uh, uh, revisions the information as well. And we get, that's something that we could basically, uh, or let's do it for devices for change. So uh, we can see here that all, all the different kind of uh, settings you have. And for example, we can give it a uh, change mark of A. Then just selecting that okay, this is this is okay. We can let's print all the uh, all the information we have about this, like so. And now when I click publish, it's asking me uh, which is the time interval I want to use to check what has changed. So let's let's begin from uh, well the beginning of time it seems to this date and then I click publish and it will now go through the database and find all the equipment that fits this uh, device schedule and it will then create an Excel file out of those which it downloads and then I can view it in Excel as well. So this this is a good way of getting information out from the system and then uh, viewing it later on. So it now seems that okay the file has been downloaded I can take a look at that one. If Excel, ah, here it is. So here we can first see a summary of everything has been that has been ch changed, and then we can also take a look at each of these uh, equipments. And of course, they are all new teams, so everything is now being labeled with A. Uh, if we now do another uh, few changes there, and then for example, mark them with B, would have a less changes there. But anyhow, you can easily see. And for example, then to print this out on paper if you want to, want to, or share it with a, uh, with others who are not using Designer uh, by email. But uh, a, a quick, easy way of doing revisions uh, and getting stuff out from the, uh, from the system. All right. The. Uh, Next one is efficient communication. So as, as shown before, the, the first way of doing collaboration and communication is of, of course by working in the same, same environment uh, using the same data. But then we can also share information between uh, different uh, users. Uh, we can do this, for example, so that when a designer has defined, for example, all the pumps in the project, uh, you can create a package of those, which is then sent uh, to the contractor, and the contractor can then uh, select the actual uh, products and send them back to the designer. That are these values now okay? You define this. This is the best we can do. This is an affordable good solution uh, would this work and then the designer can either approve or ask for clarification clarifications uh, based on that information the good thing here is that we actually have an audit trail so instead of uh, the contractor just installing whatever you want to or he wants to uh, you actually have a formal process to follow uh, where you see that this was what was originally required and this is the thing that was actually installed on site. And this is of course basis for the as-built information that you can then hand over to the customer as well at the end of the project. So you actually know what has been installed. Uh, this works with all the mechanical stuff uh, and uh, plumbing, electrical stuff. Uh, as an example. So for example, all the light fixtures, uh, you you first define that this is a type of a light, and then later on you can easily mark there that this is the actual light that is going to be installed, and the type of a bulb, and this kind of information, which you can then uh, use later on. So uh, just sort of a, a quick recap on that, that one. So uh, how much effort does it take to uh, change a light bulb? So in the old, old days, uh, a facility manager here gets a notification that a light somewhere has burned out. It's, people are in the dark. So he would need to find out uh, what, uh, what type of a bulb it is, what actually was installed, uh, then go and see it, and then find the right bulb and then get it fixed. With designer, you can actually see, okay, who installed it, what was installed, what's specified, uh, if there's a warranty period, uh, and so forth. So it's a lot more efficient way of getting the problem fixed than uh, 
trying to guess uh, and trying to remember or gather from all, all different documents what was the actual uh, stuff that uh, got installed. So, uh, recapping on the benefits, uh, trying uh, we increased the margins by uh, trying to avoid errors and reducing omissions during the project because everybody's working in a standardized way. Uh, the planning is faster because you don't have to start from scratch. You don't use your old uh, complete design as a starting point so that you might leave some of the old numbers and old uh, uh, definitions there. But instead you get, get to start from a good starting point where you have a template you can use. And those templates are something that the company admin, for example, can decide which ones are the ones that we want to use and uh, what we will then uh, sort of recommend to use in the future as well. There is change management and it improved the communication as well. Uh, on the pricing, uh, we have a, a sort of a, a user-based licensing. So we start from 60 euros per user per month, uh, but we do that in a sort of a flexible basis. So uh, a company which, for example, has 30 or 60 designers, we see what is an, uh, sort of a good average number of people using it every day, and we only charge for those. Then, then for every year, we can together check what is a good increase or uh, down sort of even decrease in the usage and then change the, uh, the billing accordingly. Uh, we also have special pricing for owners and contractors because uh, the, the user pricing doesn't really work in those cases as well. There's more value in the information there than uh, you can get from the uh, actual users. Uh, the the user, users are not limited to inside the company. So, for example, company X buying it can share, of course, the access uh, with all the employees there. But then also you can give access to ex external people if you have subcontractors or you want to share the information, for example, with, the, uh, with your customers. So then, of course, you can give access to them as well. So there's no, no limitations there. Um, Usually, uh, a good practice has been to start with designer as a pilot project. And then we help to set it up. Uh, we help to set up the libraries. We give the admin user training. We can give an info session to all of the employees and just ensuring that the first project will be a success. Uh, usually, it's not not the best practice to have the most difficult and uh, biggest project as the first one but have something fairly standard so that we can uh, sort of start uh, learning how the uh, process goes. So, and they have been quite successful. We have good feedback on those. There's also a demo version we can give you access to. Uh, it's a version which gets uh, uh, reset every night. So you cannot really do any uh, sort of real work there, but at least it gives you a good feeling how the system is working and what you can do there. And of course, there's uh, online tutorials on how to, how to use that use the system. I think it's now time to uh, look at the questions we have and there seems to be uh, uh, some number of questions and of course you can use the, uh, the questions panel uh, on the uh, participant panel uh, to ask more questions if you if you have those. There seems to be few already so let's get started with those. Uh, and yeah, the first one seems to be from the early on in the presentation. That can several users use designer at the same time? And yes, the answer is that you can have as many people as you need to uh, using designer. So that's not a problem. Um, then there's another one on the same topic. Uh, how do you take designer into use? And uh, as I said, it's a it's a cloud system. So basically, we give you uh, access. Uh, we basically see it in a way that we need to have sort of an admin user for each customer who can then create users inside the company. And uh, then you can create projects uh, and start creating the libraries there. And as I said, the pilot project usually is a very good, a very good way of starting. Um, then can this information be used in facility management? 
and yes, I think this is a very good, very good starting point uh, to start using this uh, for uh, during the operational phase of the uh, the building as well, because now you actually have detailed information what what was required, and then for example, if you need to replace some equipment or devices, then you see the properties. So you don't you don't only need to replace it with exactly the similar same pump, but you actually, for example, can see what was the original requirement and then use that information to get a replacement. Also, when you do then uh, modifications or changes in the building, then you can use the information as well. Um, then there's a new one. Uh, if you have multiple people working on the same project, can you restrict some people access to viewing only so that they can't change anything? Uh, this is actually uh, this is a good question and this is something that we are now working on. So we also have a sort of uh, roles. So you can currently you can either be a contractor or you can be a designer. And we are also thinking that there is need for other type of roles. Uh, for example, a um, commenting role that you cannot really change any of the values, but you could leave notes. Uh, so you could basically observe how the process is going, but you couldn't do any damage by changing the values. You can also have a hidden uh, projects. So not everybody needs to see everything. So you can define which of your employees see which projects. And that's quite handy in some cases. Um, then there's a new question as well. Uh, does this work uh, with hospital gas systems? And yes, it does. So um, we are not sensitive on what type of systems there are. So the database on, behind the system doesn't know really that it's a, a MAP system. Uh, but you can define your equipment. You can define what type of uh, uh, equipment you're needing, uh, basically. On regarding the needs and the business you are doing. So if you are specializing in hospital gases, then of course you, you can define what type of pumps and uh, containers and lines and uh, these kind of things you need. And then just build up the, your own company uh, library accordingly. Uh, then uh, good question again does this system link with schematic drawings and if you can and if you can demonstrate this so um, i would love to demonstrate it. and yes it does link with schematic drawings but we just before we started i had to change from my own computer to a backup computer so i don't have any licenses to uh, the system so I currently cannot open any schematic drawings sorry about that uh, i will contact you on email regarding that later on uh, but basically how this works is we can link with AutoCAD and with MagicAD uh, schematics at the moment and how this works is that uh, the, the drawing blocks have certain information in them which then links it with the designer database so then for example you can uh, open uh, open either the schematic and you can see the designer uh, specifications or the attributes there and change them as well so it's a bi-directional link or you can open designer and change it there and it will then uh, update in the schematic drawing as well uh, then we have a new question as well does this work with mobile devices and yes it does so this uh, uh, works with any uh, major mm, browser and you only need to be connected to the uh, internet so if you want to you could for example view this information uh, with your ipad on site but to be totally honest uh, i haven't seen anybody doing that yet but of course if that's something that uh, you'd like to do then that's, that's quite an interesting approach as well all right time is flying uh, at this point, I would like to thank you for uh, the, the interest. There are some questions that we will get back with uh, email as well. Uh, maybe the last one still, there's a good question. Is there a list of standard equipment items in the database? Yes, there is. So with the, with the system, we will also give you uh, the sort of the basic template uh, we currently have a Finnish one, of course, uh, and then we have the English language one, which actually was demonstrated here so those are the ones that we will give with the software and then during the pilot project will of course help you to uh, for example import your uh, current uh, equipment uh, 
as well into the system. So we can do that from Excel Excel sheets. Uh, that's not a problem. Some manual work, of course, but nothing nothing too major. It then get, keeps keeps building up in this system. So it's a sort of a good good place to start. All right. But anyhow, uh, thank you for your interest. It's it's been good. Uh, uh, there should be a. a a survey opening after uh, the webinar, so I hope that you can take a few few moments to answer uh, those questions as well. And uh, uh, probably we'll have another more detailed webinar in the future about uh, the features and functions in more detail. But for now, I thank you and wish you a very good day. <laughs>